Now back to Greece, our top story of this morning, of course, all week. Let's bring in one of our favorite guests, Mark Faber. He is the publisher of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report, and he joins us now on the phone from Thailand. Mark, great to have you uh, here on the Bloomberg Market Day. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I want to start with getting your take on what has happened in Athens in the last 24 hours. We had one guest on earlier this morning who described this as a three-ring circus with no circus leader. What's your take? Well, my take is that uh, they will have to compromise. The Greece has basically rejected the austerity proposal by the EU. And uh, what we will see is essentially uh, the, the ECB will either have to essentially continue to pump money into the Greek banking system or they'll have to stop. And everybody knows in the world that Greece cannot pay its debt at the current size. So what will happen, in my view, is either Greece will leave the EU and uh, will suffer very badly for a few months, maybe even longer. Uh, there will be a cash shortage. Or the EU and the ECB and the IMF will have to cut a significant haircut. Uh, Tsipras has proposed a haircut of something like 30%. I don't think that's enough. I think they will need a haircut of at least 50%. So do you think, I mean, Thomas Piketty this morning in deep sight was arguing for debt forgiveness, saying that, you know, Germany uh, received a lot of debt forgiveness after the Second World War, and he thinks they should extend the same kind of offer to Greece. What do you think about that argument? Yes, I agree that they should have a, a debt forgiveness. But if you forgive debts and you then continue to pump money into Greece, and they don't compromise themselves because the government is bloated in Greece, then, they won't, then the problem will resurface in future. But I'd like to focus on something, uh, which is Greece may be the first country to actually uh, oppose the measures imposed on them by the ECB, by the EU, and also by the IMF, and more countries may follow. And for the market, the implications are what we are actually seeing today already, that the weaker credits in Europe, uh, Portugal, Italy, Spain, their bonds are weakening, whereas the strong credits are strengthening, in particular U.S. Treasuries. And I don't believe that stocks have been weak recently because of Greece. I think they're weak for a number of reasons. I think the global economy is slowing down, particularly the economy that is related to China. And uh, we have, I mean, many indices that were down already significantly before today. What? Okay, well, Mark, let, well, let's get to the Chinese market reaction in just a second. But on this issue of contagion, you know, Matt, I noticed uh, over the weekend on Twitter, the head of Podemos, the Spanish anti-austerity uh, party, he put up a new avatar, a picture of him with Alexis Tsipras. This is exactly what Angela Merkel does not want to see, a sort of a cross-border camaraderie between the anti-austerity parties. Mark, how likely do you think it is that we are actually going to see contagion spread further? I think the likelihood of uh, contagion is very high and I have to say uh, when you have a borrower you also have a lender and it's actually in my view amazing how the EU kept on pumping money into Greece partly also to bail out their own banks and suddenly now the debt is no longer manageable and I would say uh, wake up people of the world and investors, Greece will come to your neighborhood very soon. Maybe not this year, but next year or whenever it is, because the world is over indebted and defaults will follow or they'll have to create very high inflation rates. What, what do you think, Mark, though, will happen if Greece is indeed thrown out of the euro. I mean, that would mean essentially total debt forgiveness because they would, I guess they would default if that were the case. And then a lot of people argue that markets will start turning against the next weakest member. Yes, possibly. I think for Greece, actually, 
probably to exit the EU is the best option because if they if they default on everything, then they'll be basically debt free. Now, the pain near term will be very substantial because they won't have any cash money or sufficient cash money. There'll be a cash shortage. The economy will plunge, but the economy has already plunged as a result of the measures and the over indebtedness they have. Uh, Mark, we also do have to ask you about this uh, sell-off we've seen in China. Initially today, at one point, when the market opened, the stock market, the Shanghai Composite, was up 8 9%. Uh, it's come off a little bit since then, but we are still about 30% off uh, since Chinese equities peaked earlier in June, I believe June 12th. What do you Correct. think about the sell-off in the Chinese market? How much further uh, could we go? How much further into bear territory could Chinese equities move? Well, my view was that... Uh after this more than 100% increase in Chinese stocks and huge speculation and huge speculation on margin. Margin debt in China as a percent of the economy was almost twice as large as in the US. So it was very large and uh, my view was that the market would fall from the peak by at least 40%. And I still maintain that, uh, that uh, the market will move lower before it starts to move up again. But I don't think we'll see a new high in China for some time. Why? You, you mentioned the underlying economies there having uh, real problems or at least slowing down. How bad do you think that is? How significant? I think the economy is very weak by uh, Chinese growth standards. And we've seen that also in uh, industrial commodity prices. Uh, I think lots of sectors in China are no longer growing. But you have to realize China is a country that has a one uh, billion three hundred million people. You have lots of different provinces that are as large as a U.S. state. So you can have some uh, provinces that are still growing and some sectors are still growing and other sectors are contracting. But overall, I think at, pre at the present, the Chinese economy, and this I base on export figures, say, from South Korea to China, from Taiwan to China, and so forth. Uh, at the present time, I guess, uh, the maximum the Chinese economy is growing at is 4%. But that wow. is the maximum. 4%. Um, all right, Mark, just a final quick question uh, on the Fed. Does everything that's happening in Greece right now, and perhaps what's also happening in the Chinese markets, uh, does this all force Jenny Yellen to delay a rate hike? Well, as you know, the majority of Fed governors that are voting are doves. They're dovish. They will use any excuse to essentially delay a rate increase. And the ECB will use the Greek situation most likely to print even more money. I don't believe that it will help the economy. Don't misunderstand me. But that's what I think they will do. All right, Mark Faber, thank you so much for joining us. Mark Faber joining us there by phone from Thailand.